to Julius. Puts up a three. Yes! And a goal! Bearcat Blitz, another episode as we come off of a dominant defensive showing from the Cincinnati Bearcats men's basketball team. I'm your host, Russ Heltman, your all Bearcats reporter, and he is Neil Meyer of the Front Office News. Catch him at frontofficenews.com, me and my work at allbearcats.com. And you're, of course, tuned into Bearcat Blitz, whether that be on Bally Sports Ohio, thanks to our great partner at Bally's for all of their awesome, awesome work getting this show onto their channel. Of course, you can check us out on podcast platforms as well, whether that be Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcasts, throw us a five-star review there and subscribe. And also on Talking Cats with Russ Heltman, my YouTube page, we can see interviews with Bearcat players and all of our Bearcat Blitz episodes each and every week, twice a week coming at you throughout the college basketball season. An eight and one start for the Bearcats. They take out the Bryant Bulldogs, 85-53. We'll start the show with that. Dive into some of the best performances there. We have another big one this Saturday, a neutral site matchup at Heritage Bank Arena between UC and Dayton. We'll get into the mid middle of the show, the meat of the show, with a look at that matchup. And then we're excited to welcome on veteran UC guard, John Newman the third had his best career game this past weekend against Xavier, hosted another good one on Tuesday night against Bryant. He's their point of attack defender and also putting up the most efficient season of his career in one of the better offensive efficiency players in the Big 12. Excited to talk to John on uh, on a, a lucky, lucky appearance because it's their off day today on Wednesday when we are recording this. So thank you to John for making some time there. Before we do that, though, we are, of course, presented by Bet Online. As all the major sports are in action this week with the college football playoff ready to kick off, Bet Online is your number one destination for all your sports wagering info, including news for pro football, the NBA, upcoming fights and NHL games this season's this season, I should say. Head to the website today to get into the action and see all the updated odds for the week. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. And a matchup last night, Neil, that for the Bearcats offense did not start in the first half. It took a, took a little bit of waking up, and Wes Miller acknowledged uh, pretty honestly that there was a hangover for this team coming off the Crosstown shootout loss. They go into the half up 30-27 as 20-point favorites against Bryant, and they destroy them in the second half, shoot nearly 60% from the field, post a 55-point half, and they win 85-53 behind a 10-point, or was it 12-point performance out of Aziz Bandego, but that's not where he made his big impact. 17 rebounds and a season-high four blocks, had a 23.9 defensive rating. That is not a typo. UC gave up just 24 points per 100 possessions with the Senegalese superstar on the floor. That was the type of defensive impact we all thought Aziz Bandego could reach as his ceiling this year. And he did it, what, Neil, in his fifth or sixth game with the program. Yeah, and it was a huge performance, obviously, especially after a very slow first half. And Coach Miller really emphasized that after the game about – potentially having a little bit of a hangover there following the Xavier game. And it showed there in the first half, but man, did they turn it on there in the second half. And it all started with Aziz Bandego just alone in the second half. He finished with the double, double 12 points, a, ties a career high in 17 rebounds, four blocks. And they really started getting the offense going. And it started early there in the second half. Once he started getting those blocks, he got the one block and it sparked a seven, zero run after the Connor Withers technical foul. And then from there, the Bearcats took the, took control and never looked back, but man, wasn't Aziz Bandego impressive? And you can't even just talk about Aziz Bandego. You talk about Victor Locken as well. I mean, the two big seven-footers for West Miller and the Bearcats combined for 29 of the team's 57 rebounds, and that's a huge impression on the night. They out-rebounded the Bulldogs 57-33, to and anytime you can get 57 rebounds in a game is phenomenal, but if you can get nearly 30 of them from your two seven-footers, that's a great night for West Miller and the Bearcats. And that was a showing that a lot of Bearcats fans were really hoping to see with both of those big mans on the court. And man, was it a, a great sight to see last night at Fifth Third Arena there in the second half. 
Yeah, I think Lockin and, and a Bandega are kind of the story of this team right now. They were obviously the story of last night. This is a team that's being driven by its big play. Obviously, the guards made an impact. CJ Frederick perked up a little bit last night. He bounced back with his shot, was able to take the podium after the game as one of the featured players alongside Aziz Bandego. Frederick with 14 points, four of eight shooting, three for seven from downtown. And that's the most key number, I think, for this team moving forward when we look at this game on Saturday against a Dayton team that shoots the three ball extremely efficiently this season. And in Big 12 play, Neil, when we think about if you see the way they play defense as a top 35, top 40 efficiency defense in the country, if they can just find a way to unlock two to, and you're going to hope for most games, three triples a night out of C.J. Frederick, just keep teams honest there, keep teams from packing the paint against Locken, packing the paint against Bandega, who they still need to work out the kinks on those lob timings, and they still need to get that down from the guards to Bandego in terms of unlocking his full offensive potential. But – Getting C.J. Frederick going is massive, and we'll see what happens outside of Fifth Third Arena. I made it a point going into that press conference last night that I wanted to ask Wes Miller what his thoughts are on the splits on the road versus at home. They're shooting 40% roughly at home from the three-point line. They're shooting 19% on the road, and he kind of just looked at me and made a good point. There's only been two games. They've only had two-game sample size of this type of matchup in terms of, uh, of a tough road, in and they get a – not real true road environment on Saturday. There's going to be a split of fans, and I would expect maybe a little bit more Dayton faithful to show up just based on the ticket prices and, and the ticket uh, ticket allotment so far. But it's still going to be a place where you're not used to shooting. You're not used to getting those shots up. Can they find a way to consistently hit these deep shots outside of fifth third? They shot 35% last night. That was easily good enough to win because they posted the most team rebounds, 57 that they've had since the game against Savannah State in 2017. So they're going to win the rebounding battle a lot of times, Neil. They're going to win the offensive rebounding a lot, battle a lot of times, and that's going to be key against a very good defensive rebounding team against Dayton. But can they find a way to just get near 10 triples a game and get C.J. Frederick to have about 30 or 40% of those shots to allow him to have the biggest impact while he's on the floor? That's the biggest key for me when you try to take something away from a game where UC was a 20-point favorite and they end up covering the number uh, after a sloppy, sloppy first half where, deal. You know, I think in the first five minutes of the game, there was six total points, five total turnovers. And I told you at halftime, we were on pace for 40 overall turnovers in the game. The hangover was there, but I think it was a great sign that this team fought through that hangover and was able to bury Bryant with an 18-1 to run, 20-3 to run, I think Ryan Roberts confirmed after the game uh, from the Riverfront, Riverfront outlet. That's a great response. That shows the moxie of this team. And the fact that Wes Miller noted that on Monday was the best hard grit and grind two-hour practice in terms of effort he's seen from this program since he's taken it over, that's a huge, huge sign and a great sign that this team, despite dropping its first big real test of the season, can have that fortitude, the bounce back, which you have to have when you think about that Big 12 slate opening up on January 6th with five of the first six teams currently ranked in the AP poll. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a huge momentum shift there because you got to finish conference play strong. Obviously, Saturday night versus Dayton is going to be a very tough matchup. It's one of those games where it's kind of like a home game, but it, in the end, it's considered a neutral site because yet the game is still played here in Cincinnati. It is only two miles away from campus downtown at Heritage Bank Arena which, as you mentioned, it's going to be filled with a lot of Dayton fans, Cincinnati fans. And, I mean, this is something we saw last week where Coach Grant and Coach Miller combined for a little event presented by Ulta Fiber and really gave a good amount of tickets to some younger kids in the community there in Middletown to come to this game. So, overall, they're really doing a lot of great things to support and pack Heritage Bank Arena for this Saturday's uh, contest. But, Man, this is going to be a tough stretch, and it starts on Saturday because once you get into this back half of conference play or non-conference play, you know, as you mentioned, first five of the six games within Big 12 conference play are all teams ranked within the top 25 in the latest AP poll, and it's going to be a gauntlet. It is going to be a gauntlet, but the Bearcats know they have a huge test at hand for Saturday to get a big quad one win heading into – Big 12 play where they will have plenty of opportunities to get a couple more quad wins on the road and at home throughout this conference season. 
no doubt about it. Let's get to that Dayton matchup right now as you see taking on one team that is going to be right there at the end in the Atlantic 10, in my view, of having a chance to win that tournament overall once we get to that part of the season and win the overall conference regular season title as well. Dayton, a top 65 team in the country. Very good shot at playing in the NCAA tournament in 2024. We'll get to that after this message on Bearcat Blitz. And then, of course, John Newman coming on the show to round things out for the final segment. Quick look here, Neil, as Russ Heltman, your host of Bearcat Blitz, returns here along with my co-host, Neil Meyer, Russ Heltman of the All Bearcats Outlet, and Neil Meyer from the front office news. When we look at Dayton right now, they're 7-2 and two overall, Neil. They have losses this season to Houston. Obviously not going to throw a lot of stones at a loss to Houston, 69-55, and to Northwestern. So I've only dropped games to power conference opponents. They're top 40 in the country in adjusted offense with a scorching three-point line. They're hitting about 40% of their threes this year. Yeah, 40.3%. That's 12th nationally in the country. They're led by Dayron Holmes, who is a fantastic, fantastic interior presence. Not going to hurt you from outside, but Nate Santos will do plenty of damage there. 60% from three. Kobe Bray is 49% from three. Those two guys combined for nine attempts per game. So that's a massive, massive defensive problem that the Bearcats are going to have to solve. And when we look at their overall kind of efficiencies, 38th nationally in adjusted offense, 106th nationally right now in adjusted defense on Ken Palm. Very interesting matchup for the Bearcats, a matchup that they haven't really faced in terms of a big at six foot 10, 220 pounds and Dayron Holmes. That's going to be the lead lead matchup kind of predictor for this game and top guy on the scouting port report plus uh, guys around him that he can flash to, that he can dish the ball to, averaging about, what, three assists a game out of the post, can find shooters all over the place. This is a very intriguing matchup, Neil, and one that I think is going to test the UC coaching staff in their game plan. Yeah, absolutely. And you're talking about Deron Holmes, who was preseason A-10 player of the year heading into this season. But this Dayton team, they're 7-2 and two on the season. They lost a key substantial player, and Malachi Smith before the season even started. And that was a huge blow because if you add Malachi Smith back to the fold for the Flyers, they might not be 7-2. and two. They're, They might get that win versus Northwestern on the road because that was a 71 to, I believe, 65 game. So you add that veteran point guard back into the fold, that might be a different outcome for them earlier in the season. But this is a very good Dayton squad led by Anthony Grant. And Anthony Grant has done a fantastic job at turning that Dayton Flyer program around and getting them back to the next level in recent years. And this is going to be an exciting matchup. Deron Holmes is a guy you mentioned, a big size guy, six foot 10, 230, averaging nearly 21 points a game a season ago. This season, he's averaging close to 17 and eight. He's a big presence. And that is a matchup the Bearcats have not seen this season. And that's a guy who's At all, able- really right. I mean, what Eastern Washington, he they had a decent center in their, in their lineup, but nobody really offensively that's going to, that's been able to punish teams so far in this mm-hmm. non-conference slate. Yeah. And Deron Holmes is capable of getting a bucket at any time. This is a guy who can change the game in many ways. He can get down there. He can attack. He can score in a flurry. If he gets hot, he gets hot. And we've all seen that in recent years, but this is going to be a matchup where Victor Lockin, Odio Guama might really kind of have a battle down there in the front court. They might have their hands full, especially in terms of size, but this is another game where Aziz Bandego could really pop off and make an immediate impact. So it's going to be a fun sight to see. You mentioned Nate Santos, a sharpshooting three-point specialist for the Flyers, 60% from behind the arc. And then Kobe Bray is shooting nearly 50%. So if they can get hot from the arc, from behind the arc, it's going to be a battle for the Bearcats early. But this is going to be one of those neutral environments. So really kind of curious to see how both teams come out on Saturday. Obviously, Dayton has had a whole week to prepare for this matchup. Meanwhile, the Bearcats, on the other hand, They had the Crosstown shootout on Saturday last week, and then they responded last night with a big win over Bryant. Now they have just three days to prepare for a very tough Dayton Flyers team. Yeah, interesting to see how that kind of, maybe they can carry the momentum of the second half into this game in the first half a little bit easier than you were able to carry momentum from a win before Xavier into an obviously slower start than they wanted in that first half. 
in the Crosstown shootout. It's going to be a really, really fun matchup, Neil. This is the biggest team that they've played. When you think about the top three scoring options being at least six foot six or taller and the wings that you're going to have to deal with on the outside and Nate Santos and Kobe Bray, Kobe Ellis as well at the guard position. All those guys are going to bring an interesting factor to this one. And a guy who's going to be tasked with, with dealing with a few of them is John Newman the third, Cincinnati's top perimeter defender and one of the most efficient players on the team when you look at the offensive side of the ball this year. We'll get to our conversation with John Newman after the break right here on Bearcat Blitz. Time to welcome him on, John Newman the third to the show. John, thank you so much for taking some time out of the off day today and, and joining us on the show. We're uh, glad to have you on, man. Yes, sir. I'm glad to be here, man. Appreciate y'all having me. Appreciate y'all having me. I think the audio. So, John, obviously, Russ is a little bit, the audio issues there. Just yeah. talk about this week heading into Dayton. Obviously, a big week, big win last night versus Bryant. Just talk about what this last uh, week has been like. Obviously, Coach Miller emphasized a little bit of a hangover following Xavier and how you guys responded really well. Just talk about how you guys prepared from that loss heading into Bryant and how you guys are preparing for Dayton. This week. Um. Well, the thing is, we were we want to respond, you know, with this team. That's kind of that's what we do. I think that's one of the things that we do the best is respond. Um, that's like one of the pillars of our program. So, um, you know, we 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 basically respond to wins and losses the same way. You know, if we lose, we're going to get in the gym and try to figure it out and get better, learn from it. And whenever we win, we try to learn from it. So, um, I think it just it's just all in the same, and you gotta gotta treat every situation the same. You know, same approach. Sorry about that, John. I have myself muted somehow on the on the intro into the uh, into the drop right there. So you're averaging <laughs> a career high in points, mm -hmm. well, offensive efficiency, your 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 top top PER player efficiency rating of your entire career, and your true shooting percentage is the top of your career too. What has been clicking so far so well for you on offense? Um, really, I think it's just um, staying in the gym. Uh, okay. It's probably the most consistent I've been, you know, uh, and just staying consistent in my everyday routine. Uh, you know, I took some time, like the time last year allowed me to get my mental right and everything. Yeah. So I think it's just about staying in the gym, man. Like, because if you if you put the, the work in and you get your reps, everything is just going to feel natural. Now you're just playing off your instinct. So I think it's just being in the gym and then my teammates finding me, putting me in good situations for me to thrive. Um, they make it easy for me. You know, I play with a lot of great players, man, like guys that are crazy in ball screens, guys that can catch lobs, you know, guys that can dominate down low. So uh, everyone kind of makes it easy for each other. I think that's what makes our team special. Cool. Yeah, so you mentioned you played with a lot of talented players over the season. Mm -hmm. Just want to get your input on Aziz Mandego's performance last night. Obviously 12 points, but 17 rebounds, four blocks. Overall, just what do you think as a teammate of Aziz, and what did you think of his performance last night? Man, man, I was I was impressed with him. <laughs> I was impressed with him. Uh, man, Aziz is he's one of the best uh, live threats in the country. He's one of the best rim protectors in the country. He just, um, you know, affecting shots, being down there, and his with his size and athleticism and length. Um, and just among so many other things that he adds to the game, is it was great. It was great to see that it started to come together for him last night, really. Um, so I'm excited for him. I'm excited for him, and hopefully that's something he can continue to do. John Newman III, UC veteran guard, joining us here. So when when you go and put up that kind of performance individually in the Crosstown shootout, obviously you guys fall short. You wanted to get that win, and, and you, I'm, I'm sure, especially this being your last chance in this rivalry to get it done where it was especially more meaningful to you to try to get that win. But, I mean, you did all you could with that performance, shooting 7 of 10 from the field and largely sh shutting down Desmond Claude, one of their best scorers on offense. Was there, like, a different mental approach you had entering that game? Did you feel any differently going in? We were like, man, I, I think I can really, really have, have a nice impact on my final run in the CT shootout. Yeah, I think, um, obviously, everyone's on go for that game. You know, that's a big-time game, so – 
you want to perform well um but you know i for me you know it's good to play well it's always good to do well in any, in any part of life but for me like the the pleasure in doing well does not outlast like the pain of, of losing you right. know like i don't take defeat very well at all man um so i kind of just it, it felt good to play well but i'm still kind of you know i'm still kind of hurt a little bit <laughs> not gonna lie. Was, when when west kind of brought up the hangover aspect of things last night what did you really feel that in the locker room just as one of the leaders and just thinking like man we were really upset like you you were did it feel like everybody took that loss about as hard and and not not to say the hard is bad but like that that that's a good thing that's a that's a great way to respond and a great way to say hey we all really care and now we can go out on monday after an off day after the film session and put our best foot forward and practice this season exactly exactly uh like you said exactly it's it's i think it, there's good in it there's good in you know in in losing sometimes like once you learn you know obviously it's it's tough to win them all but i think one of the things that we do well with this team is you know respond like i said earlier and learn from it you know you want to the, the hangover I, I would say is i mean i think that's natural i think that happens for anyone though i think right. that's that's natural in college basketball just to you know still be feeling the kind of way but it's all about how you bounce back i think great teams and one of the attributes of great teams is is response and uh bouncing back so i think uh it was good to show that last night yeah, so, John, obviously another quick turnaround for you guys and another big rivalry game at Heritage Bank Arena this Saturday night, first eight. And just talk about the preparation. Obviously, I know Bryant was still just less than 24 hours ago, but talk about the preparation now that you guys have a quick three-day window to get right, get prepared for another rivalry game here on a neutral site, just right here in downtown Cincinnati where a lot of fans are going to be packed into Heritage Bank Arena. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a really exciting game, like you said. Um, you know, it's it's one of the big, big games for the for the state of Ohio. So uh, I think it's important for us to, you know, put our best foot forward here in these next couple of days. Um, just like just like always. And just get better, get better. at What we have to do, lock it on the game plan. And, uh, you know, we do what we do. I always like our chances. I always like our chances. So. We just got to get ready these next couple of days, lock in, and uh, get ready get ready to, uh, to go ball. Real quick, John, less, 20, 20 second answer or less here as we're on a time crunch to close the show. What's your favorite aspect of getting the top defensive perimeter assignment? What's that favorite aspect you like about it? Man, it keeps me engaged. It keeps, okay. me, it keeps me engaged in the game, you know. Um, having having to guard these guys, it feels like it, it, it gives – it's really giving me a task. I mean, we all have our tasks, but – uh, I kind of have the biggest challenge. So um, it kind of forces me to be more locked in and more focused mentally on what I have to do, being more engaged on the defensive side of the ball, which I, I still have. I still got work to do in that sense. But, um, you know, it's 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 an honor, too, at the same time. You know, it's an honor. So I take a lot of pride in that. And, uh, you know, it's also one of my strong suits. So I have fun with it, man. I have fun with it. Love it. John Newman the third. Good luck, man, the rest of the season. Good luck with all those defensive assignments. Keep up with that efficiency and uh, good luck in the big game this Saturday. Yes, sir. Appreciate, Appreciate you, John. Thank y'all for having me. Great stuff from John Newman. Neil, we got to get out of here, man. For Neil Meyer, I'm Russ Heltman. This has been Bearcat Blitz presented by Bet Online. <laughs> Seconds left, shot clock off, four point game. DeJulius puts up a three. Yes!